In this video, I will analyze a simple situation in the daily chart of the euro dollar using pitchforks and a few other ideas that surround the concept of pitchforks too. As the students of the price action trading courses understand, price is nonlinear and it changes quickly. That requires constant adaptation of our theoretical framework of analysis. One of the great tools we have for that is called frequency shifting and frequency tuning. Drawing pitchforks on market extremes is great depending on the situation, but sometimes the analysis asks for, for more refined work. Obviously, you cannot decide that beforehand. You need to get into the analysis and see if, if your tools are actually describing price action well before making the decision of using more advanced techniques because, like I said, sometimes the simple application of tools like pitchforks will not will work better than the more sophisticated types of application. Unfortunately, this sort of thing requires some intuition and some experience reading charts, which goes back to what I always say about being cons constantly exposed to price action analysis as it functions similar similarly to a language. You have to consider the types of flows that are being formed in the chart in relation to your tools, like the four types of flows that I teach in the price action course, and you also need to sense if your tools are indeed in tune with the market or not. This might seem too vague in the first moment, but it isn't. By understanding the concept of validation, a trader can know if the tools he's using are describing price action in the way they should. You have to be careful with price action so you don't, don't start guessing about the future. You need to rely on solid ground in patterns that appear frequently. When I say patterns, I don't mean the simple geometric patterns that everybody knows. I'm talking about more refined geometric patterns in alignment with some techniques of statistical physics, like frequency for example. So in this chart you can see that price was making lower highs and lower lows in the major dimension, and the price created a break in that pattern with an upward movement that resembles a standing flow almost falling into the running flow classification. This lag up goes back to a normal frequency line coming out of a large fractal bar down that opened in the gap, and to an inward frequency line from a major high. These two lines form a zone that price tests two times. A more simplistic analysis would call this a double top formation, but that's practically meaningless without the understanding of why such a formation happened at that place. Notice that price fails to reach the upper line of the fork I already drew in the chart. In the classic way of using pitchforks, this is called the Hagopian's rule, where a failure to reach one of the lines will produce a more significant move in the opposite direction. This is also a superficial rule that can only be used in alignment with other techniques to work effectively. The fact that we have a Hagopian's rule in the upper line of the blue pitchfork implies that this pitchfork might not be the best fit for the current price action. This is the moment where we can go back to what I was saying in the beginning of the video about the more sophisticated clues regarding the stati statistical physics of price for the optimization of pitchfork angles. Even though we have some validation in this blue pitchfork by looking at its tail frequency, we can adjust the frequency in the A-axis and then later observe if this adjustment is respected. By adjusting the pitchfork tail to the abstract anchoring position in the original A-axis, we can see that the fork gets an, a gentler angle in relation to the X-axis, and what used to be the Hagopian's rule turns into a perfect test of the upper line of the fork. We can even observe a fractal bar piercing the upper line of the pitchfork. Let's not forget also that we are inside some sort of zone that was previously detected by the two black horizontal lines. We can stop here for a second and make the case for a short trade. By adding the fact that price is within a supply zone marked by the two black lines, and observing the test and then drift from the upper line of the blue pitchfork, we have the identification of a possible market edge. We can then use a tool like the modified shift pitchfork to find an optimal place to put an entry, which would be the upper line of the black modified shift fork. Notice that we have a mini Hagopian's rule happening in the blue fork once again, if the black fork holds to be true. We also have the appearance of a hybrid bar at the edge signaling the departure of price to the center line of the black fork. That would certainly be 
a good short trade opportunity by adding multiple pieces of evidence to form a context. Going back to the analysis regarding the blue upward pitchfork now, with its frequency tuned to an abstract anchor position, we can see that we have an almost symmetrical situation happening in the downside. We have the formation of a double bottom in simple price action jargon. We have a price entering a demand zone marked by the black lines and the appearance of a fract of fractal bars and hybrid bars as it usually, it usually happens in, in major reversal points of the market. We can go a little further here and draw another modified shift pitchfork and you'll see that this region is relevant to be classified as a possible market edge. We can see the double bottom formation touching the upper line of the modified shift pitchfork on the outside, which is of course valid because pitchfork lines are nothing more than fancy support and resistance lines that are not obvious to most people. The confluence of these elements of analysis make it possible for the trader to form a small narrative that justifies entering in a long trade, just like it could have happened in the short position a few bars back. Notice that sometimes it can be tricky trying to classify the trend of the market because we can miss these opportunities that rely more on the triangulation of small pieces of evidence that intersect together at the market edges. This analysis is obviously made in hindsight, but if you are smart, you can see the value of a properly done hindsight analysis for the purpose of learning about how these situations play out in real markets. I often say that there is more than what meets the eye when it comes to price action analysis. We have to be careful with price action analysis and technical analysis in general because it is a visual way of understanding the markets and there are a few problems with that. Human sight is deeply flawed and highly susceptible to distortions of interpretation even though we feel completely impartial to it. It lacks the impartiality of mathematics, for example. With that said, the very fact that human sight is flawed gives us an opportunity to take advantage of the flawed way in which most people will analyze the charts. And that's where the true potential of technical analysis really dwells. However, the requirement for that is that we learn how we can and will be flawed, and then recognize the ways in which we can go around that to our own advantage. This is usually referred to as the impartial spectator sense, and it is tremendously useful in technical analysis. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the analysis and wish to learn how to trade using these techniques, check out my courses available in the video description. If you liked the video, help support the channel by clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel, activating the notifications button, and leaving your feedback below in the comment section. Thank you for watching.